helicopter. Don't know if you can hear that, but I can. <sighs> Close and personal. Love it. I love the glow, okay? I can't get enough. This... <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be trying some new makeup, some new makeup to me and just some products that I feel like I've spoken about in like my monthly favorites, but I haven't got around to showing you guys the application and how they actually perform in real life, in real time here as, as we speak smooth. So today I'm going to be showing you the Empowered palette by Huda Beauty. I'm going to be showing you like my go-to favourite look that I found with that eyeshadow palette. I have the Nude Venus 2 and the new highlighter from the Pat McGrath Holiday Collection as well as two shades of her new Liquid Lust Metallic Liquid Lipsticks for holiday as well. I'm going to be revisiting my Chanel versus Huda concealer battle this time without setting and in a similar shade. I'm also going to be sharing the Rose Door highlight with you as well as showing you a demo with the House Labs foundation that I've been raving about and I also have a load of new brushes to kind of work into the video as well as we go. So if that sounds good to you, keep watching. By the way, I actually like curled my lashes today. <gasps> Who is she? Who is she? I'm going to pry my eyes with my Urban Decay Primer Potion, still making Robert proud, still using this. I do kind of flip back and forth, I will admit, between like eyeshadow primer and my concealer powder friend, but I'm still trying. My brows are an absolute mess. I'm due to get them laminated next week. It's been an extra week this month because my brow tech rudely went on holiday without my permission the week that I was due to get them like the eight week mark. So I've had to wait for her an extra week. <sighs> Can you believe it? And it's been painful. Like it's painful when it's eight weeks, <laughs> let alone nine weeks. I cannot live without laminating my brows now I absolutely love it and they're all really hairy because I refuse to pluck them myself now as well I just completely leave them to my brow tech because I don't even trust myself to pluck a single hair from them <laughs> this is the jumbo worker by the way from the new synergy fusion eye set perfect eyeshadow primer concealer brush it's just ideal but I do really like this eyeshadow primer. It's definitely the best one I've tried. So I'm going to be using the Huda Empowered palette today. I'm gonna to be showing you my favorite look that I've found thus far, which I will say I have enjoyed this palette, but the mattes I find can be a little tricksy. I'm going to start off with Rebel, this one, <laughs> and my Refer 16. I mean, I was thinking when I first decided I was gonna do like uh, this type of video, get ready, uh, trying new makeup type of video, that I would do like a life update. And then I realized I didn't really have a life update. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Nothing's happening. I think since the last time I spoke to you guys, we've been doing a lot of work on the house. Okay, a lot of work. Because if you remember, we were supposed to be moving, like we should have moved. We should have been in our new house by now. But it all fell through. Basically our buyer randomly pulled out at the last second and we tried for a few weeks to find a new buyer um, to see if we could still make everything go through. But then we lost the house we wanted to buy. And so we took our house back off the market and thought we're just gonna take a break. We're gonna do some more work to the house that we wanted to do and just enjoy it until the spring because there's a lot going on here with like house prices, interest rates. It's just a really terrible time to sell a house. So we figured we wouldn't <laughs> and we just do some work on the house to make it what we wanted. The thing is, we love our home. The house is amazing. It's perfect. It's just not where we want it to be. If we could pick it up and move it, we would do that. We just wanna be nearer to family. So yeah, we're happy here. We love the home. The kids are very happy, happy at school, but there were a few things we needed to do, hence why I'm in this new beautiful space. So this room I'm in now used to be our guest bedroom. 
and upstairs we have three bedrooms downstairs we have one like ensuite bedroom this this one and upstairs we have obviously our bedroom and then we the kids were sharing the biggest bedroom but not the nicest in my opinion and then there was my old studio which is the smallest bedroom that has like an ensuite next i'm going into big dreams this shade refer 15. so that's where i used to film in our smallest upstairs bedroom because i didn't want to take a large room just to film in like i felt like that was selfish and our kids have always shared a room they've always loved to share a room they didn't really want to actually split up and go into their own rooms but we just could, kind of felt like it was time you know my daughter is eight my son is six and as much as they loved sharing a room it was just time that they had their own space and they made it their own and you know as my daughter gets older she's going to want to start having privacy from her brother so yeah we just sort of thought it was time so that meant that as we weren't moving I had to get out of my filming space and come down here which gives me a lot more room and obviously I used to have all of my makeup and everything in my bedroom which you know is a lot of space that takes up so all of my makeup has come down here now and it's just really nice having everything in one place I don't have to like if I forgot something when I was filming before I had to like stop filming run to my bedroom go through my doors doors drawers I've only got one door go through my drawers then run back and it was a whole situation whereas now everything is in here everything I need for filming editing and all of my makeup and it's just a sanctuary a haven and I'm loving it the one thing I was I had mixed feelings about was leaving behind the natural lighting so same brush but we're going into winner now the deeper sort of cool shade so yeah I am now I am I am now using studio lighting low amount I've got a big window like over there yonder um so I've got a bit of a mix of natural daylight and studio light but basically on me is studio light but quite a low level so it still shows colors and everything very realistically it's still actually way more realistically you can see like skin texture discoloration way better here just because the amount of light is perfect and balanced and it's not sort of creating like you know this side isn't much lighter than this side and there's more warmth over here and cool here and it doesn't change constantly as the clouds move and the sun goes in and out which was really frustrating. And I feel like, you know, on the perfect day, on the perfect weather, the perfect position, perfect time of day, natural daylight is wonderful. But outside of that, it's actually less realistic than studio light because it's constantly changing and moving and disrupting and causing issues. And it's really very problematic. And I do agree, I think it looks beautiful and it's lovely, but, only like 1% of the time. The rest of the time is an absolute nightmare and a horror show. Especially in the like darker, gloomier months, it's very problematic. There's, you know, few days where you have enough daylight to like film and at the right amount of time, like this, it goes dark here, like four o'clock now, you know, by sort of two, it's too dark for me to film on the best of days. By the way, I'm using the Shimmer Bold Moves. This is my favorite shimmer in this palette, I absolutely love it it's popping let me tell you that for nothing so yeah I know some people much prefer natural daylight but it's I was I'll tell you this for nothing natural daylight is not all it's cracked up to be and the vast majority of the time I was having to like post edit light and color because it had just gone bonkers because the sun had come out or gone behind a cloud and it had left things ridiculously gray or ridiculously yellow, which is not how they looked in real life. So yeah, I think there's this misconception that natural daylight is like the best, most accurate light. And it is if the natural daylight situation circumstances are perfect. If they're not, it's complete rubbish. So I think this is going to give me a much more consistent and 
accurate light that I won't have to like fight with constantly. I was like some videos, I was having to stop filming and adjust my camera settings like 10 times. I was stopping every like three minutes, if that, sometimes every like few seconds to change my camera settings as the light changed and it just wasn't sustainable. Like I, I could not continue <laughs> living this life. I'm just using a bit of visionary just to kind of go between the shimmer and the mattes and just blend that all together. Rafa O2 brush. So I don't have a new primer or concealer to show you. So I'm just, what? So I don't have a new primer or mascara to show you. So I'm just gonna whack my huge Tom Ford soft matte on and give myself a big old coat of my MAC stack mascara. Do you know, I have been thinking about trying a new lash serum. I've been thinking about it. I've seen one on TikTok that's like a small British business and it, they make lash serum, brow serum. I think maybe they do a few other products. I think they have a mascara. It looks great and it doesn't contain what are they called? The ingredient that is in lash serum that is the problematic one, the one that changes, can change eye colour and just cause you issues. It doesn't contain that ingredient and I've seen some great before and afters. If you remember, the last time I attempted to use a lash serum was like a year ago. It was um, Revitalash, like the kind of best known, I think it's like the best selling lash serum and it worked. My lashes definitely grew but they just went crazy and they got so curly it, they were just really hard to manage and they didn't look good they were just too long if that's a thing so this time what I'm thinking of doing is trying this new lash serum from glow with it is the brand that I want to try if you want to check them out and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to try and like use it until my lashes are like where I like as long as I want them to be. And then I'm going to go to like using it less often. So using it maybe once a week instead of every day and see if I can, if that will help. Because I feel like it's very easy. Like once I decided my lashes were too long and crazy, I don't want to do this anymore. I just stopped using my Revital Lash and they, you know, fairly quickly went back to how they were before. So, you know, no harm, no foul, not, not a big deal. So I'm thinking I might give it another go. Am I crazy? I don't know. I'm gonna use the House Labs foundation. So I, I picked up the shade 260, which is a lovely natural, like light medium olive undertone. Perfect, love it. Great shade. I will say also the shipping and everything was nice and quick. I had no issues whatsoever. The communication was great. I didn't get charged any extra taxes. I do wish that Sephora UK would hurry up and stock this brand because it is annoying to have to order from the US and slow and can be expensive if you're not ordering, you know, a few things at a time. By the way, I got my conch pierced. I talked about this on my Instagram. I got my conch pierced a few days ago, so I'm not gonna put like foundation on that ear because obviously we are being very careful with that fresh piercing. So if you're wondering why I'm not painting my ears, that's why. <laughs> You know, I was absolutely terrified of that piercing because I haven't had a piercing in years. Like I've had lots of tattoos in recent years. I say lots, I think I've got like seven tattoos now. And that's what I've been doing. I haven't had a piercing since I was literally 18. Like I got my ears pierced when I was, you know, really young. And then I had my belly button pierced when I was like 18 maybe. Um, and that was the last piercing I got. Oh wait, no, I did get like a piercing up here on my ear, but it never healed. It would. It was because I was swimming. It was when I was swimming. And so my hat was always rubbing it. It was always in water. So it just never properly healed. And I ended up taking it out and then it just healed up. So I that was my last piercing. That was probably like nearly 20 years ago. Okay, nearly 20 years since I've had a piercing, I reckon. And so I was terrified. I just can't really remember how much they hurt. And the guy who did it was like, oh, it's not that bad. Like he was like saying, if you've had tattoos, like this is nothing. And I was like, mm, is it though? 
But what I have found is since having children, like there is just, you know, anything that hurts is like, <laughs> it's not childbirth, you know? That's what I tell myself. And that's what I thought afterwards is obviously my pain threshold and what I consider painful having gone through like natural childbirth delivery is like a different <laughs> there's a different scale now you know nothing actually is painful anymore if it's not giving birth everything else is like a minor inconvenience so yeah everyone has been asking me if it hurt and I will say it wasn't it didn't not hurt it wasn't like painless I did notice it happening but it literally was like one second and it was like ouch cool that was the end of it and so I felt really ridiculous because I was so nervous going in but my plan is to have like a few more in each ear so this was obviously quite a big one didn't want to do a lot in one day I can't sleep on this side of my face which is really annoying me because I'm a wriggler I like go back and forth back and forth on my front on my side on my side and at the moment I'm like trying to force myself to sleep only on this side and it's tricky because my body just wants to thrash about okay I just want to keep swapping sides and I can't sleep on this side because I will hurt my piercing so yeah I want to have once this one has kind of partially healed give it a month or so and we're sort of well on the way to heal town I plan to do a couple more lobes in here maybe I will have a I really want a flat like one straight through like here and then we'll start working on this here you know three lobes maybe I'll get is it tragus this this bit through here maybe nothing crazy that's kind of the plan long term see how we go you know see how we go but yeah I figured I'd start doing piercings instead of tattoos for a while it's just really hard to find tattooists in this area that I really like that do the work that I want I feel like everybody in London does the kind of tattoos that I really want done but no one in the southwest does this I really struggle to find like fine line tattoo artists okay so if you remember a week or so ago i did a comparison between the new chanel concealer and the huda beauty concealer and one of the tricky things was that the huda beauty concealer i had was a lot darker than the chanel shade so it's tricky to compare when the shade was so different so i thought today i ordered a lighter shade of the huda concealer to see actually how they compare when the shade is much closer. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm also gonna use a different brush for the Chanel and then use my sponge to see how I like it with that. Let's zoom in a bit, shall we? Close and personal. So let's start off with the Chanel side and I'm gonna use my Sony Fusion Worker Brush because I think this is gonna help me apply less of the Chanel concealer and be more precise as well with it like in places like down my nose. I definitely don't love the undertone of this Chanel concealer but I think you know that is one of the cons that we noticed about this concealer because the shade there are no I was going to say the shade descriptions aren't very helpful there are none so that's what's not helpful there are no shade descriptions. It's a mystery you just have to guess and I think I ended up with like a pink undertone concealer which is my nightmare that's my least favorite shade I like a neutral concealer worst case scenario I'll accept a yellow concealer pink is not is not for me so that brush is much better and allowing me to apply this a bit easier and apply less. I think that was the trouble with using certain brushes or larger fluffier brushes that I was applying too much of the Chanel concealer. So let's see how we get on using a precise brush and a good old sponge. Also, I was asked not to set, so I'm not gonna set the concealer today. This sponge stinks because I washed it with antibacterial soap instead of my brush cleaner and it is intense. So the new shade of Huda that I picked up is, ooh, what is she, Coconut Flakes. So a neutral shade, much more up my street, but brighter so we can compare. 
with the Chanel. Use the other side of my sponge. I mean, just the process of the Huda is so much easier because it's got a dough for it. It's literally just so much quicker and easier to do. I feel like that's like a similar, a more similar shade. So it's a more fair comparison because I had a few comments saying, and I did mention in the video, obviously the Chanel side will look brighter given that the shade is like so much lighter than the Huda, it obviously will have more of a brightening effect, but yeah, I think this is a fairer demonstration comparison between the two because the shades are closer. So that's done. Let's continue with a little bit of eyeshadow under the eye. I'm just gonna go back into Rebel and use my Sony G Soft Definer under the lower lash line. So I'm not setting the concealer, but the eyeshadow will kind of help in that immediate under eye area to stop creasing and settling. So I don't have a new bronzer, but I'm gonna use my Gucci bronzer with the new jumbo bronzer from Sony G. I don't think, have I used this brush on camera before? I don't think I have, have I? You tell me, I can't remember using it on camera, but it is like the only bronzer brush I use now. I'm obsessed with it. It's just the perfect size and shape and it just picks up the perfect amount of bronzer. Like I don't have to worry about like going in too heavy because it just, it always adds a natural light blended wash of bronzer. Like you really can't whack way too much down and then struggle to blend it out with this brush. It's really, I mean, Sonia always hits it out of the park, but this is just my perfect bronzer brush. I feel like I'll never, I'll never replace him. He is my bronzer brush for life. So what I thought I'd do today with highlight is I thought I would show you the Chanel Rose d'Or and the new Pat McGrath Venusian Nude side by side so you can see. I have done some comparisons and things like that on my Instagram, but I thought it would be helpful for you to actually see them applied on the face so you can really make a decision. So I'm using my Sony G Fan Pro. Now for me on my skin tone with the Chanel Rose Door, it's a hair deep for me on my skin tone at the moment. So I'm gonna apply it and keep it fairly far back because if I bring it in here, you can see there, it's leaving a bit of a cast if I really use it lightly and I really blend it in and then go in with my blush, it's workable, it's absolutely fine and it doesn't really cause me any problems. But if I bring it too far in here, use it too heavily or I applied it after my blush, it's hard for me to get this to blend, but it's beautiful, very natural, very smooth, very flattering on my texture and I think it's gorgeous. I think I'll just like it a lot more in the summer when I'm a bit more tanned than I am now. Now I'm in like my ultimate winter form. So the Pat McGrath is a much better color for me right now, but she is much shimmerier. It gives you definitely a bit of a, like the wet look, which I love but it does enhance texture more. It is just a more impactful highlighter. But the color for me is perfect right now. It's just, it is a bit more of a dramatic, shimmery highlighter. A lot of people have been telling me they were really gutted that it was so like sparkly, shimmery, had more shimmer and glitter in it than they were expecting, which it's, this is why we wait for review guys. This is why wait for a review. Don't waste your money until you've seen swatches, until you've seen it demonstrated because ugh, it's such a shame to spend that much and be disappointed in a product and it not be what you wanted. But I think it's beautiful. It's just, yeah, it is gonna enhance texture. You are gonna see more shimmer and glitter than with something like the Chanel. If you wanted something more natural, it's not gonna be for you. So for the blush, we have this stunning little number. This is the Nude Venus 2 from Pat's Holiday Collection. And I'm gonna use the new 107 from BK Beauty. This looks like a perfect blush brush. Oh, 
I've been loving this blush. It is very similar, as I've been saying, to the uh, original Nude Venus. Having said that, I prefer this one. It's just a bit glowier and it, it, run, it leans a little peachier on me, which I prefer and I, of course, prefer the glow. So if you're choosing between the two, do I get the original Nude Venus or do I get the Nude Venus 2? I would say get the Nude Venus 2. If you already have the Nude Venus 1, I would say you don't need this, it's unnecessary. They're almost identical. Do you know what? Neither of these concealers is like creasing at all on me with that being set. So fair play to both of you guys. Well done. I am just loving this foundation. I think it's so gorgeous and it's so glowy. I just love it. I love the glow, okay? I can't get enough. So now I'm gonna try for the first time ever, hot off the press, the new Fix Plus setting spray from MAC, alcohol-free long-lasting setting spray. <laughs> What's not to love? I, I'm gonna try and shield my piercing though, because I'm not, I definitely shouldn't be spraying this on it, I don't think. How are we gonna do this? Like this? Good plan. Mmm. I can't smell anything, you know. A really nice, fine mist. I will say, definitely, whenever you're using a new setting spray, definitely do one, like, get your first spray out away from your face, because I could see the first couple of sprays were chonky. They were splashing, okay? You don't want that on your face. The rest was very nice and light, and I can't smell anything. So again, I've either got COVID again, or there is, it's fragrance free, is it? I smell nothing. So that's great, exciting. Freshly delivered in the door today, I have the two new liquid metallic, I have the two new shades of liquid lipstick, metallic liquid lipstick from Pat McGrath, which I'm really excited for. So I picked up the shade Nude Awakening and also Crimson Sunset. There are three shades, but I did not want the third. I just got the two. Loving that packaging, very festive, very festive. I should get a white because I feel like I should try both of these on my lips, no? No? Okay, so we're going Crimson Sunset first. Okay, this looks nothing like the promo pictures at all. Okay, so that's Crimson Sunset. I'm completely baffled. I need to look up the pictures because I was expecting this to be like orangey. I mean, this, this happens all the time. This is no nothing new. I feel like Pat McGrath's lip swatches are always outrageously inaccurate, but like I wasn't expecting this level of outrageously inaccurate. It's so annoying. If you're gonna do lip swatches, like have them be slightly accurate. This is ridiculous. It's a completely different color. <sighs> so yeah, I am disappointed because I wanted this color, not this color, there's nothing like, I wouldn't have ordered this. You're annoying. Now, I will say Pat McGrath does accept returns, but from the US, it's like free returns, you know, just no, no hassle, no problem. In the UK, you have to source, arrange and pay for your own delivery back to the return center. So it basically would cost me more to send this back than like the product. So that I find really annoying and unfair to those of us who aren't American, like it should be an equal, like we should all have the same returns process to the same brand. So it's not worth me returning it, even though it's essentially a falsely advertised shade, in my opinion. So that's just something that has previously irked me about the brand, uh, that, you know, their swatches are not accurate and then you have to pay for the right to return it. Mm. No, but I will say the formula feels nice, light, comfortable. Let's do a kiss test. Mmm, hardly anything there, barely anything there, and I haven't given it very long to dry down, so that's a good sign. Oh, it's not easy to get off, you know. Oh my God, that sponge stinks. Right, let's hope we have better luck with the nude awakening shade. I mean, <laughs> let's see. A really nice doe fit, actually. 
really precise and easy, nice amount of product. I made a full hash of applying that, but you know, definitely accidentally overlined there by quite some way. <laughs> Whoops. Hmm. Hmm. Try to look past the messy application. This is definitely much more accurate, I would say, to the swatches online, like the comparison between the photos online and like what I'm seeing on my lips is definitely like I'd say that looks the same. And this is the problem. It's like, it's not like all of the swatches are off. So you just don't know whether to trust them or not. Cause I'd say this was accurate to the picture on the website, but the other shade is absolutely not accurate. So it's hard to, you know, at least be consistent, either be wildly off or accurate. So that at least we know what the deal is, you know? This shade I like, you know, I thought these would be a bit more like her Blitz Trance in that, you know, they're called a metallic, but they actually just look glossy, but this definitely looks metallic. It doesn't look shiny or glossy, it looks metallic, which is, you know, perhaps not really my cup of tea, but it's a nice shade. I think it's wearable as far as a metallic lipstick would go. It's comfortable. I like the doe fit. I love this packaging. It's actually really nice and festive. I don't know if I'm gonna wear this a lot though. What do you guys think? Would you wear metallic lipstick? This one's definitely more subtle and it's quite fun, you know? Maybe it'll grow on me. Okay, so I've zoomed in about as much as I can. My cam camera does not love it when I zoom in this close. It starts like not wanting to focus. So if it looks like it's going sharp and then not sharp and then not, some people seem to think that's a filter, but it's just my camera struggling <laughs> with the zoom. So yeah, this is the Chanel eye. This is the Huda eye. They look very, very close as they did in my initial review. I will say I'm very impressed by both of these concealers because I haven't set them and they both look really good. Like no creasing that is noticeable. And they both look really flattering, great coverage. They're almost, again, like barely a difference. The Chanel is a little more radiant as per the description than the Huda, but you know, really not sort of 60 pounds of difference to my eye. The skin, this House Labs foundation, I think is gorgeous, stunning. As I said, I love the Chanel highlighter. It's so smooth and luminous. The Pat McGrath is also beautiful, but it is more shimmery blush you guys know I love and this eyeshadow I think is beautiful slightly trickier to work with but some gorgeous options really intrigued to see what you guys think of the metallic lips is it your thing or not I'm not sure if it's mine to be fair Okay, so there you have it. A full face of new slash newish slash new to me products. What have you guys tried out of all these things that I've spoken about today? Have you tried the new Chanel concealer? Have you tried the House Labs foundation? This would be like my pick, I think, from this whole video. I think the Pat McGrath products are all beautiful, but I don't think they're like wildly different. You know, the Chanel highlight, I think if you have a medium to deep skin tone is stunning as well. I think the House Labs foundation is like a new favorite, like a top five, I feel. I just need to use her more to decide what position in the top five, but a top five contender for sure. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise take care for now, bye 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 bye.